Right. Uh, good, good morning, everybody. Good morning to uh, members, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream of this meeting um, from my kitchen, as you can see. Uh, so this is meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council Cabinet. Uh, my name is Bridget Smith. And I'm the leader of South Cambridgeshire District Council, and I'm the chair of the cabinet. Uh, for the information of members of the public, the cabinet, which is made up of myself and six lead cabinet members, is responsible for most of the council services for preparing a budget and the council's major policies and strategies and consideration by full council. Can I just ask that we have people mute because I can still hear I can still hear background noise and if I can hear it, I imagine other people can as well. So this is the second virtual meeting of the cabinet and we're still getting used to these new ways of working, as you can see. So bear up, bear with us if there's any technical issues. And first, just a few housekeeping announcements. Uh, please, could you make sure your device is fully charged and your microphones are on mute unless you're invited to speak? And when you are invited to speak, please unmute your microphone. When you finish speaking, please turn off your microphone. Please speak slowly and clearly and don't talk over or interrupt anyone uh, because it all just goes wrong then. And please, could you switch off or silence any other devices you have so that they don't interrupt proceedings? I'll try and make sure my dogs are silenced, which is always a bit challenging. Uh, the normal procedure at Cabinet is to take votes by affirmation and we'll continue with this tradition. When we move to a vote on any item, I'll ask if members agree with the proposal and then if any member wants to vote against the proposal or to abstain and then a ro roll call will be taken. I'll then ask Cabinet members to speak into the microphone so their votes clear both to Cabinet and to those watching this webcast. A member should respond for, against or abstain when their name is called. Now, there's business on this agenda which is confidential and this is referred to as exempt business and this is usually because things are commercially sensitive. If the committee agrees to exclude the press and public at item 17 on this agenda, the live video stream will end and I'll let members of the public know when that's about to happen. So cabinet members present, I'll now invite each of you to introduce yourselves. After I call your name, please turn on your microphone and say your name and your lead cabinet role so that your presence may be noticed, noted. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Aidan van der Weyer, please could you introduce yourself? Hello, yes, I, I'm Aidan van der Weyer, I'm Deputy Leader and Lead Member for Strategic Planning and Transport. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Neil Goff. Uh, good morning, I'm Neil Goff. I'm the uh, uh, Deputy Leader as well for the uh, South Council District Council. Councillor Bill Handley. Hello, I'm Bill Handley, Lead Member for Environmental Services and Licensing. Uh, Toomey Hawkins, Councillor Toomey Hawkins. I can't hear you, Councillor Hawkins. Oh, we're going to have finger to trouble, finger trouble this morning. I'm sorry. Can you hear me That's now? All right. We can. Thank you. It is Monday after all. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tumi Hawkins and I am the cabinet member for planning. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hazel Smith. Hello, I'm Councillor Hazel Smith. I'm the lead member for housing. And Councillor John Williams. Have we got Councillor John Williams? No, no. I believe he's still experiencing um, some technical problems mm -hmm. uh, joining us. OK, thank you, Councillor van der Waer. Okay. Have, we, have we got John Williams now? I'm just contacting him now. OK, fine. So if you'd let me if you'd let me know, Aaron, please, when he joins us so that he can uh, introduce himself, albeit late. Councillor John Williams is the lead member for finance. Uh, so I can, can I confirm the, the uh, meeting is quorum, please? It is. That's four members. OK, so may I also just check that we have Councillor Brian Milnes as the vice chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee present in the meeting, please. Good morning, everybody. Brian Milnes, vice chair of Scrutiny, reporting Thank on behalf. Thank you very much. Good morning. And are there any non-cabinet members present in this meeting? Um, yes. So I, so, yes. Yes. Right. Would you like to introduce yourselves, please, one at, one at a time? Uh, I, can I, go first? I can see Councillor Bradnam there. Yes, please introduce yourself. 
Thank you. Hello, I'm Councillor Bradnam from Milton and Waterbeach Ward. Welcome. And I think I saw Councillor Douglas de Lacey. Uh, yes, I'm Councillor Douglas de Lacey. I'm from Girton Ward. And do we have any other? Uh, Councillor, Councillor Peter MacDonald from Duxford. Um, I'm Councillor Claire Daunton from Fenditton and Fulbourne Ward. Councillor Heather Williams, the Mordens Ward. Councillor Sue Ellington, Swavesey Ward. Councillor Richard Williams, Whittlesford Ward. Uh, Councillor Philippa Hart, Melbourne Ward. Is that everybody? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, sorry, leader. I believe Councillor yeah. uh, Waters is with us, but maybe having technical issues speaking. Okay. She is sure. here. Lovely. Uh, welcome, Councillor Waters. So, uh, thank you very much indeed. Good to see so many people. Um, so, we also have the following officers from our senior leadership team present uh, Liz Watts, the Chief Executive, Susan Gardner Craig, Head of HR and Corporate Services, Peter Maddox, Head of Finance, Rory McKenna, our Monitoring Officer, Paul Frainer, who's the Assistant Director of uh, Strategy and Economy. Uh, and he's here representing the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development. Uh, plus, we have our valuable Democratic Service support staff. Um, and I think that's I think that's okay. all the key people. Uh, Liz, anybody else? We also have Gareth Bell uh, from Con and Sustainable Communities, Peter Campbell and Julie Fletcher from Housing, uh, John Dixon and Caroline Hunt from Planning, uh, Hannah. Loftus from Planning, Matthew Patterson from Planning, Leslie McFarlane from Sustainable Communities, Sean Misson from Procurement, Trevor Nicholl from uh, Waste and Environment, Jennifer Perry from Housing, and I think that is everybody. Chair. Okay. Thank you. I can see a, I can see a hand raised from David Oosby. Is that are you set telling us you're here, David, or are you uh, wanting to speak? You're telling us you're here. David as well. Thank you very much. Andy. OK, so um, item two on our agenda today is apologies. Uh, Jonathan. Sorry, are... Leader, uh, sorry, I just wanted to let you know that Councillor John Williams is now in attendance. Oh, hello, John Williams. Councillor Williams, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm uh, Councillor John Williams. I'm lead cabinet member for finance. Hello, glad you, glad you managed to join us. Um, so, Jonathan, are there any apologies for absence today, please? Thank you, Leader. I've received no apologies for this meeting. Lovely, thank you. And do any members have interest to declare in relation to any of the items of business on the agenda? No? Okay, thank you. So moving on to item four, uh, which is minutes. Members are asked to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 6th of May 2020. Uh, Councillor Hazel Smith has drawn attention to some corrections which need to be made to the minutes. Um, I do I? Uh, I don't think I need to uh, go through these because they're mainly sort of typographic. Um, yeah, I think they're mainly typographic. So if we can include those, unless unless anybody tells me I should go, I should go through these in detail. No, okay, fine. Uh, so subject to these amendments, which uh, Councillor Smith has kindly um, identified, uh, I move the approval of the minutes as a correct record. Is that seconded? Councillor Van de Weyer seconds them. Uh, thank you very much. Do very members much. approve? Do, thank you. Do members approve the minutes as amended? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Does anybody wish to abstain or vote against? No, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Cabinet therefore agrees the approval of the minutes as amended as a correct record by affirmation. Thank you. Uh, so we move on to item five, which is public questions. Um, and we have one speaker today. Uh, and I could, I think I could see uh, Mrs. James Williams was with us earlier. Uh, Mrs. Williams, would you like to ask your question, please? Thank you, Chair. Good morning, all. I'd like to ask, um, on a quarterly basis, local planning authorities are required to submit forms PS1 and PS2 to the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, providing a range of information about decisions taken on district matters planning applications. 
The information gathered on these forms is used, among other purposes, to calculate local authorities' performance for the purposes of designating underperforming local planning authorities under Section 62A, <laughs> under Section 62A of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990. On Form PS2, the time from application to decision begins when a valid application and the correct fee have been received and ends on the date a decision notice is dispatched. Therefore, will the portfolio holder for planning please state in clear and unambiguous terms Um, I'll just go back to that. Will the portfolio holder for planning please state in clear and unambiguous terms whether the data reported on the quarterly PS1 and PS2 forms submitted since May 2018 is in fact accurate and free from systematic errors in the reporting of data? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so Councillor Toomey Hawkins is going to uh, respond to this. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Williams, and um, <clears throat> thank you for your question. Um, the data that we submit in forms PS1 and PS2 returns has historically been generated automatically through the Council's Agile planning application software and is prepared and submitted using the required standard report format. Now, this is data that has been inputted into the system by officers throughout the planning process, and we use it to produce a return within the MHCLG reporting timelines. Now, in February this year, uh, the planning service migrated over 1 million records from the Agile system into a new IDOCS system shared database. And like the Agile one, the IDOC solution also provides a reporting tool uh, to support uh, and generate and submit the PS1 and PS2 returns. Now, this year, though, we have not submitted the PS1 and PS2 returns for, for quarter four, right, which is January to March this year. As due to the COVID pandemic, the government has extended the submission date to August 2020. Now, obviously, we'll be taking care to ensure that the first submissions reported through the new system um, will represent an accurate record of the service performance. Now, recognizing that over 6,000 applications per year pass through our system, it would be unwise for anyone to guarantee that there are no errors in the reported data. However, I am satisfied that the use of a recognized software solution and the standardized reporting templates enable us as a planning authority to provide a consistent and accurate return to the Ministry of Housing, local government. Thank you. Thank you. Um, may I ask a follow up question, please, Councillor Hawkins? Yes, you may. Yeah. So um, if the council is provided with evidence indicating that systematic inaccuracies exist in the data reported to the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government on forms PS1 and or PS2, since May 2018, will the portfolio holder for planning commit to commissioning an external audit to investigate any irregularities uncovered and prepare corrected data for resubmission by the council, please? Now, obviously, we will need to look at that and we will take appropriate action. I cannot commit to anything until I have seen whatever evidence it is that you have, but I'm prepared to uh, send my answer to you uh, both your original question and your follow-up question in writing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your response. You're on mute, um, Councillor Smith. You, you can't avoid it, right. Um, well, <laughs> while, while you try to sort yourself out, um, coming off uh, mute, um, uh, you might just take over and uh, proceed with the business um, and see if they uh, um, could uh, do that. Um, so the next item on the agenda uh, is um, an overview committee. Um, uh, we have a report um, in our um, uh, in the agenda pack 
Um, and uh, so I'll now um, uh, hand over to uh, Councillor Milnes, uh, the Vice Chair of uh, Scrutiny Overview, um, uh, to um, uh, um, introduce this report. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Uh, so as we've done previously and, uh, and given your um, acceptance, what I suggest that we do is deal with the, these matters during the items as they come up through the agenda and um, uh, take it in that. So there's a written report in front of you um, and then I'll comment uh, by invitation uh, during the meeting. Thank you. Yep, yep thank you. That, that seems uh, a very wise uh, way to proceed. Uh, we now have um, agenda item seven, which is the North East Cambridge Area Action Plan. Uh, that is on uh, the page nine of the agenda pack. Uh, this is actually um, uh, my item to introduce. Um, I'll, I'll say a brief word or two, and then we've got um, several of the uh, um, officers who've been working on this here. Um, and we'll say a word or two too. Obviously, I mean, this was looked at extensively um, uh, by, by scrutiny. Um, uh, and uh, there was an introduction and presentation there. Um, and so, um, especially given the um, size of the agenda that we've got to cover today, uh, I don't propose to um, uh, go in a great deal of, over in a great deal of detail what's, what's, um, um, uh, what we are uh, proposing to consult on. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so, so I just will just say a brief, a brief word of introduction. So th this is um, uh, a consultation on a, on a, uh, a planning policy uh, um, for a, a a very large area of North Cambridge. Um, uh, originally, the area action plan was focusing on the um, the water treatment works uh, and the um, old uh, Chester and sidings. Um, uh, and so that area going over to St John's Innovation Park. We're now proposing expanding that area uh, to include the whole of the science park and regarded as one um, uh, um, sort of one area to be to be considered together. And that that, that greatly increases the um, uh, the sort of the the scope that we can the potential that, that we can see in the uh, in the, the this very important strategic site um there is a uh, several um uh, transport links um passing through here the new train station busway potential future uh, high quality public trans transport links to the north chisholm trail cycleways and of course mm -hmm. mode itself which is um, one of the main arteries um uh, in um in and out of cambridge uh, and it's also uh, obviously one of the um, currently uh, one of the most important uh, um, commercial areas with the, the Science Park and St John's Innovation Park, um, uh, as well as the Cambridge Business Park. Uh, and and um, alongside that, we have this this very large area um, uh, that, um, uh, especially if the uh, uh, water treatment works can be successfully uh, relocated, uh, is a is a huge area for for regeneration that gives us enormous potential. Uh, for providing uh, uh, housing in a really sustainable location, as well as more opportunities for, for um, um, business growth. Um, so what we're doing in, in the area action plan is uh, uh, creating a plan for that, that, that really uh, is, is ambitious in, 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 um, in the, the quality of the place we want to create, uh, the, the, um, uh, the sustainability of it. So, so it, is, it is essentially designed as a, as a car free area um, where where everything is is um, is at hand, transport transport links uh, as well as um, all, all, all the services, and uh, obviously with a with a, 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 a really good balance of, of um, uh, uh, housing and, and employment. Um, uh, uh, there's been an enormous amount of work on this because it's an extremely complex site and with it, with these these, um, these very ambitious policies. So it's a, uh, um, a, a, a yeah, a, a really difficult job, and, and the the amount of work that um, the officers have been working on this is, is just fantastic. Um, uh, I'm just really pleased that um, uh, you've been able to, to capture so much of, of um, what we all want from this area. Um, uh, um, so so well. Um, uh, this is being done jointly with Cambridge City Council. Uh, it's an area that straddles the, the, the boundary, so that's um, certainly appropriate that it's done like that. Um, uh, and so we're now consulta consulting on a, on a, on a draft um, uh, plan that obviously th that then will guide um, the, the development as um, uh, once we um, know what's happening with the water treatment works and, uh, uh, and the, the, the um, future potential of the, of the site. Uh, and then um, uh, so we, and the, given uh, it, it is a, it is a complex process, but um, we absolutely need to be uh, to be moving forward with this. And I'll be very eager to 
to see what um, uh, public, especially the, the residents um, in the area, um, think of this. So uh, maybe that, that's a few introductory words. Um, I'm not sure which, which any um, uh, of the officers who are here who have been working on it would like to uh, add anything. Um, to, you can just, I can see there's several, I'm not sure. I think I'm back. I'm back. I'm back up and running now, Aidan. By the way, so thank you. Back over to you. So I've, I've done my bit on. <clears throat> thank you very much indeed. Yes, no, no. I, I could. I could hear you. Just no one could hear me. Um, so um, is is Paul Freyner going to, or anybody else want yes. to add something? Hello, morning. Paul. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning, everyone. I think that's a, a very good introduction from Aidan. So I think we can just open it up now. We have got some of the officers in the lead on the project here as well. So hopefully we should be able to answer any questions that um, will arise. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so I'm just going to so uh, we've got quite a lot of recommendations here. Uh, we're being recommended to agree the name of the area action plan be formally changed to North East, East Cambridge Area Action Plan, to agree the draft North East Area Action Plan at Appendix A, uh, the draft East, North East Cambridge Policies Map, uh, and the topic papers at Appendix C for a 10 week period of public consultation under re Regulation 18 of the Town and Country Planning Regulations 2012. And that this consultation will also include the evidence documents listed in the draft, draft AAP with relevant policy and publish, published on the Shared Planning Service website. Uh, three, agree the statement of consultation, including responses to comments received to the issues and options, which was February 2019. Four, note the findings of the updated joint equalities impact assessment, draft sustainability appraisal, draft habitats, regulation assessment and duty to cooperate statement. <coughs> Five, delegate authority to the deputy leader, statutory, which is Councillor van der Weyer, um, for planning policies and open spaces to agree the further topic papers as set out at paragraph 4.17 ahead of the public consultation and lastly delegate authority to the joint director of planning and economic development in liaison with the deputy leader um, to make editorial changes to the draft NEC AAP sorry about all these consultation report and supporting documents prior to commencement of the consultation and to compri comprise minor amendments and factual updates and clarification. So um, I will just ask now if there's a seconder and then we will see if there's any more questions. And I will I will ask um, Councillor Brian Milnes to uh, contribute the views of scrutiny and overview. So can I just ask who's going to second this? Uh, or, or I will second it. Thank you, and Councillor van der Weyer, you are proposing it, yes? I'm I, I, seconding it. I, there was one thing I, I did get to say, which was as you were going through the um, recommendations, reminded me. Uh, so, so th th this is this is the, the there will be some some changes to this to, to to complete this for the purposes of the consultation. Though, in particular, for example, the the graphics. Um, uh, uh, there's some some graphics to be to be completed and, and refined. Uh, it, it, this will essentially be a, a web-based consultation. So the, the the format that we've got it in is not the format that it would present it in. So there's quite a lot of formatting and presentational work to be done, and, and that's what the um, those, those recommendations allow, allow us to do. Um, uh, but the, 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 in terms of the content, it's it, it, it's here. That, that's lovely. Thank you. So it's a pretty meaty document as it is, but actually it's set out really well. I'm really pleased with the way that. Um, you know we are pre we are presenting documents in a far more sort of user friendly way and uh, using plain English, which is uh, always welcome. Uh, if I could ask uh, Councillor Brian Mills to uh, tell us the comments of scrutiny and overview, who I know spent some considerable time looking at all of this. We did. I think this was part of our seven hundred and sixty four page agenda with a thirty six page supplement of our last meeting. <laughs> So thank you for the uh, offer to uh, contribute. Um, I think um, just reflecting some of the concerns over uh, modal shift um, uh, and getting that well established from the start and an expectation for people that might be considering moving here in time that they are unlikely to uh, have access to their own vehicle on the site, um, for example. Um, I think there was a comment about a potential uh, danger for the um, Milton Country Park um, um, in terms of um, access to recreational uh, uh, spaces. 
uh, and that we make sure that we've got uh, space on site as well. Um, and then there were uh, comments that we would like to make sure that uh, carbon zero or carbon negative um, outcomes were available from the site to make sure that it was in uh, compliance with our um, zero carbon policy. Um, and uh, then I'd also like to reflect um, the um, uh, applauding uh, the officers for putting this um, uh, area action plan together. Uh, recognising the huge amount of work that they've done on there and the comprehensive job that they've made of uh, putting this plan together. Um, so uh, I think that summarises uh, the um, scrutiny committee's view. Uh, we're sorry, Bridget. We are we're we're missing your voice. Yeah. Um, do. You OK, uh, I'll, I'll carry on and, until you can get, get your get your sound back. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Councillor Milne. That's uh, very uh, helpful. Um, uh, possibly uh, this, we've got at least a couple of questions from um, Cabinet members. Um, and then uh, um, depending on the issues raised, then we can come back to um, officer, officers for any further comment. Um, I think it was Councillor Hazel Smith first. Thank you. Um, Vice Chairman. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I'd like to thank the officers for the work that's been done on this. I know as a local member there there has been um, a great deal of consultation with the groups around the area and also with um, local members and uh, with businesses and so on. And there's been a lot of, of information fed in. They've done a massive amount in terms of background work for this. Um, the, the document, as Bridget said, has, has, has come out very well. It, it's, um, it's come to us with more illustrations here than we had in the report that came to, to scrutiny. Um, I'd just like to um, talk about the illustrations starting at page 128 of our agenda. There are, there are quite a lot in there that all come in a bunch and I don't think they're intended to be in those places necessarily. Um, I understand that this is a sort of um, a paper representation of what will appear via various links on the web, um, but I would like to um, understand the colours that are used in those illustrations. I, I expect on the web you'll have some sort of glossary that um, that will show a key to the colours that are used for those those um, buildings um, and also where you're showing particular places, for example, um, page 128 itself. I was guessing that that's um, Kings Hedges Road, CRC, Kilmain Close, but I don't know that from what it shows. For, for local people looking at this and being consulted on it, I think we need to know if these are existing places where they are um, just just showing this as a, an existing street section without saying where it is actually doesn't help local people to make sense of it if you like um, so um, that was the main thing on, on the illustrations um, also we still haven't got all of them in this document so you know it would be nice to see um, before it goes out perhaps um, a full one with with all the illustrations. Perhaps we could could have a preview of of how it will look on the web as well, because that will obviously be different. Um, the the other thing which I wanted to query was the timings that are in this document and whether whether there will need to be changes as we understand the um, wastewater treatment works. Um, DCO process and, and the timing of all of that. Um, will that need to change? That's towards the end of the document. Um, and also with the odour work that had been done earlier, um, what limit will there be on residential development before the ac area action plan comes in? Can, can we rely on that odour work? There isn't another place to ask this, but um, I know it's not directly pertinent to this document. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, 
are there, are there any other cabinet members who wish to speak? And then I'll see if uh, Aidan wants to respond to that. I think Toomey is wanting to. Uh, uh, Toomey Hawkins, do you want to say, say anything at this point? Uh, now, just really to say thank you to all the officers for their um, um, for their hard work. The um, AAP has been considered at the Joint Local Advisory Planning Group um, quite exhaustively, and um, the recommendations that you see have been endorsed by the uh, GLPAG. Um, so, the, so the two um, issues that uh, um, Councillor Hazel Smith raised, uh, I, I think maybe it'd be worth passing over to um, the sort of relevant officers, Paul Fainer and Hannah Loftus, um, if they have any comments on the, the issue of the, the graphics and uh, the sort of management of that in the, in the process now, and then the, the, the future of the whole process for adopting the AAP. Yeah, Thanks, hi. Kanda. I can come in on the, the graphics question as I've been managing that side of things. Um, just to reassure you, Councillor Smith, that um, almost none of the graphics that you actually saw in that document that you had are the final graphics. Unfortunately, the timescales for publishing the cabinet papers and the timescales for producing all the graphics don't align very well. So we have to unfortunately present it to you um, with all the right words, but not all the right pictures to go with them. And I can absolutely reassure you that they are going to be very clearly labelled um, and with all the right keys and information on them. And we'd be happy to share those with you via email to, um, you know, to get your feedback on them. Uh, we are also going to share some of that material with the community forum as well. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Much appreciated. Right. If there's nobody else um, wishing to speak from Cabinet, I think Councillor Douglas de Lacey would like to speak. Thank you very much, Leader. Yes. Um, I have questions on the um, transport infrastructure uh, with respect particularly to three different types of transport, if I may. First of all, horse riders. Um, policy 16 on page 202 says that leisure routes should include appropriate provisions for equestrians, and I would heartily agree with that. Um, I was going to start by thanking the officers very much for this report, incidentally, and I forgot that bit and I shouldn't have done. Um, leisure routes should include appropriate provision for equestrians. And I'm a little disappointed, therefore, that subsequently on page 212, for example, uh, they're simply lumped together with cyclists and other forms of transport. Um, and if those cyclists are uh, commuters, then I think they just don't mix with horse riders. I doubt there are any equestrian commuters. So I think the focus ought to be on page 202, that when we're talking about leisure routes, uh, we need to make sure that equestrians are adequately catered for. So that brings me to cyclists. And page 212 says that the NEC will include shared routes. Now, I asked at scrutiny, but I didn't get an answer whether it is possible to outlaw shared routes. And I would like this uh, this uh, consultation uh, to ask the public if they would like to see shared routes outlawed. The focal issue, I think, is not so much the mode of transport, bike or horse or foot. The focal is issue, it seems to me, is commuting and any route that is going to be used as a commuting route, then a shared route is simply inappropriate. People with uh, electric bikes and uh, dare I say people like me will be traveling at 15 to 20 plus miles an hour uh, to get where they need to go. They simply do not mix with pedestrians traveling at at most five miles an hour. And uh, therefore, uh, cycle, uh, th therefore, shared routes, I think, are inappropriate. Cycle lanes on roads are also problematic. They are inimical to commuting uh, and they are um, a real problem. The, the new 
advisory lanes that have been put by the, uh, the, the county council in various places are a genuine problem, not only to cyclists, but also to motorists. And at my last parish council meeting, uh, we had a large number of councillors saying that whatever transport they used, they found these, route, these new cycle lanes were actually dangerous. So we need to think about commuting cyclists perhaps in a new way. And uh, it's not only cyclists, of course, the uh, the document does mention the possibility of scooters being legalized and they are uh, a different kettle of fish, as it were. It doesn't mention, I think, anywhere mobility carriages and these are increasing hugely. And I think we really need to think for a new development that's going to be coming in the next many years as more and more people uh, depend on mobility carriages, uh, which at the moment are on pavements, harming pedestrians and in the road, holding up traffic. We need to know what we want to see, uh, where we want to see these uh, mobility carriages and what sort of uh, provision we're going to make for them and what sort of areas we are going to encourage them not to use like the road or the pavement. So I'd be very grateful if those uh, are taken into consideration. I think we need to think about these things now uh, for the future of uh, North East Cambridge. Thank you very much, Leader. Thank, thank you very much, Councillor De Lacey. Uh, those are really, really good points. And uh, and I frequently speak about the fact that when uh, we're talking about cycling, we can't just talk about cycling generically because commuter cycling and recreational cycling is, you know, they are different things. And, uh, you know, commuters will go on different routes from people who want to cycle with, you know, three three children on, on little bikes with stabilizers and so on, but they are all equally important. So I think these do need to be taken away and certainly the the issue of uh, compatibility with uh, with horse riding and with walking needs to be look, looked at. Um, I think there's an opportunity here to, to do things differently and do things better. Um, I don't know if um, Paul Frania wants to respond on that. Thank you, Leader, and thank you, Councillor De Lacey. Um, I think that and uh, the other two points I don't think we count, we picked up from Councillor Smith's questions on um, timing and odour. So I'm just going to refer you to Matt Patterson. You can answer those, hopefully. Good morning, Councillors. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so if I deal with the first issues around timing. So, yes, the AAP is predicated on uh, the relocation of the wastewater treatment works. Um, and therefore we'll need to um, ensure that the timing of that process of getting um, the permissions for the relocation and then the decommissioning of that aligns with our aspirations for bringing forward the AAP. So the timetable for the AAP may, may need to change depending on how that other process is working out, which is separate to this. With regard to the odour works, um, yes, that work can be used in terms of how we consider applications that may come forward before the wastewater treatment works is, is relocated and certainly we'll be relying on existing local plan policies in the interim as well. Um, with regard to horse riding, yes, we agree. We'll review the, the wording for those in terms of both leisure and then obviously commuting. Um, on the cyclists, again, we'll, we'll seek to provide clarity around exactly what their expectation is regarding segregated cycle lanes and, and the like, and ensuring we, we do learn from best practice and apply that in NEC and ensure that um, what we provide by way of um, sustainable transport is ultimately safe for all users of, of those surfaces. Um, so we'll take that away as gain. And um, we've already made some minor amendments following previous comments regarding um, uh, mobility carriages, so they will make it into this draft as well. So certainly we'll take those on board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matthew. That, that's good. Uh, so I'm particularly interested in this. So um, I, you know, Councillor De Lacey and I will both keep keep an eye, close eye on this. Um, now, look, I'm, get, with, I'm getting a bit um, confused on the uh, on who wants to speak because some people are using the hand function which isn't what we've agreed our standing orders say we should be indicating if we want to speak on the chat function which councillor de Lacey did did know about uh, so if we could stick with that otherwise it's i'm um, flitting around between uh, 
between the two and I'm going to be missing missing people. Uh, so I don't have anybody else indicating they wish to speak on, on this and the chat function. So I'm going to assume that is uh, that's the end of the debate on this. So um, we have a we have Councillor Van der Weyer uh, proposing this and Councillor Hawkins seconding it. Um, so and we've had everybody speaking. So cabinet is uh, recommended to, as I have previously indicated, agree all those recommendations. I'm not going to read through them again. Uh, so so, so do members um, agree with the proposal? Sorry, I, I put my request to speak please in a bit late. I apologise for that. Is it so, possible to just... So, uh, yes, Councillor Bradman, please. But can, you, can we make sure we get it in early? Because otherwise yes. we're going to be here till Christendom. Sorry, I do apologise. I just wanted to um, note that in the plans, there's a lot of reference to green space outside the North East Cambridge Area Action Plan being accessible to people um, from within the um, Action Plan area, which is fine. But what I wanted to ensure was that that does not um, detract from the amount of green space that should be allocated within the area action plan area uh, in order to make living there pleasurable and, and enjoyable and that people can thrive there. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that. Obviously very important. OK, so, move, as, so moving on to the vote, please. Um, so do members agree with the proposals, please? Yeah, agree. Agreed. OK, does anybody wish, wish to vote against the proposal? And does anybody wish to abstain? Thank you very much. Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation and I would like to add, add my thanks to uh, those of others to the um, really extraordinary amount of work that has gone into this and the quality of that work. And uh, we look forward to seeing this again as it moves forward. So thank you very much indeed. So moving on to item number eight on this huge agenda, which is at page uh, 305. Uh, and this is the uh, Greater Cambridge Local Plan. And this is the local plan that we are doing collaboratively with Cambridge City and is uh, probably the biggest thing that we are, do we are doing. Uh, this is the is issues and options feedback and the next steps. Um, so, Councillor Toomey Hawkins, would you like to introduce this report since it is uh, your responsibility? Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lida. It is indeed a big responsibility. Um, thank you very much. I think, first of all, it's just to say a big thanks to the officers for their continuing hard work on this. Um, there's a lot going on in planning, as you've seen, and this is quite a big, um, quite a big one for us. Um, what we're trying to do here is to uh, give you feedback on how the issues and options consultations that we had earlier on in the year went, uh, some feedback from that, and also um, so let you know what we're going to be doing going forward. Now, we, we have recognised that we need to front load this new plan. Um, I started work on it uh, last year, we had early engagement with um, key stakeholders uh, to agree on what was going to go out in the issues and options consultation. Now, we used a digital first approach, which is the first time that we've done that um, in South Cams, and that worked really well. Um, I mean, if you look at Appendix 1, there's a lot of data in there that shows you the sorts of results that we got. For example, we have over 300,000 seen as social media posts about the plan. Um, the videos that we created especially for this had just under 400,000 views. That's a lot. And we also had 32,000 unique page views on our website content. And we also did um, the pop-up roadshow events, which reached over 6,000 people. So we had a lot of engagement, but I think the very last event we had was the big debate at the Con Exchange, which was full, 300 people. Um, in the room and was very well received. So, you know, it, it worked very well. And I think in some respects, we've set ourselves a, uh, a high bar <laughs> for the next consultation. But hey, you know, uh, it, it's what it is. Now, in terms of the comments that we've had, I mean, if we if we look at 
a single comment uh, as being a single answer to a single question. Um, currently, we estimate that we've got about 7,400 or just over that. Um, again, you know, more than we've ever had before. So um, there's a lot that we're still collating at the moment, but the, 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 the feedback we've had um, has shown us that people do agree with the seven key themes that, um, <clears throat> that we talked about. For example, you know, the jobs, the homes and infrastructure, and also how the plan is going to be built based on things like, you know, the climate change, biodiversity and green spaces, well-being been very important. Um, what we've seen so far is that people seem to prefer our, uh, the, the, the strategy to include densification of existing settlements, um, which was also followed by building along transport corridors and then on the edge of Cambridge. But again, you know, we need to engage further um, in order to actually establish what the strategy will be. Now, one of the things um, <clears throat> that um, I need to emphasize is we started the plan um, you know, with a certain period of time to complete in mind, but that time is now <clears throat> excuse me, going to be longer for uh, various reasons, including uh, the fact that we want to include the NEC, which we've just discussed, um, to provide some of the housing that will be required in that plan. Obviously, the timetable for that is in some ways not within our control because of the DCO, as you've already heard. Uh, we also have the Oxcam arc, which is, you know, which we have to consider. Um, and East West Wales is now part of it and the CAM. So we've got quite a number of issues um, which are fitted into uh, the local plan. And we've had COVID-19, we're still in lockdown, and we need to look at how that might affect, um, you know, when and how we can um, finish off the plan. Now, what we're proposing is that because we want to engage com our communities and take them along so that we don't have <clears throat> a situation which we had with the, with the last plan, we are proposing to add two new stages. One is an additional member and stakeholder engagement this autumn to look at preferred, um, uh, you know, preferred uh, options and also a public consultation on the emerging preferred option. Um, so I think perhaps I'll need to maybe start. Oh, one other thing I need to mention is that we have a duty to cooperate with other local authorities and there is an increased obligation on us on that one at the moment, which is going to be a lot of work. Now we have, I think, potentially 11 local authorities, 13 organisations um, to consult with and agree with, which is a heck of a lot of work. So hopefully uh, you will see that um, we're trying to make sure that whatever plan it is we put together is agreeable, um, hopefully in the main, um, but that also includes uh, or results in the fact that it will take a bit longer to get to that point. But on the whole, um, I would recommend the report to you because again, it's, it's gone through the uh, Joint Local Plan Action Group and uh, we think that this is the way forward. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very, thank you very much, Councillor Hawkins. I, I think it's fair to say that as a council, we've moved into a different league on consultation. The quality of this work that's been done, um, just the way things looked, you know, it was just, it was really, really engaging, and the response from residents in participating, uh, I, I've never seen the likes of it in 15 years as being a councillor. So I'm, I'm delighted with this. And I think it means that we're going to have really high quality results at the end of this. And the important thing is that when we get to the final plan, we can truly say to our residents, you know, this is a plan that reflects what you told us. It reflects what's important to you, um, mm -hmm. because obviously what's important to you is is what's, in, what's important to us. Um, so, um, I think we, I don't know if we have anybody else from Cabinet who wants to speak. Sorry, this is it's a really clunky system at times, this. It's a, a bit slow. Um, so, uh, uh, Councillor Neil Goff, have I got you next wanting to speak? Yeah, uh, thanks. Um, thanks, Lita. I've, I've got um, <clears throat> one, one sort of comment and then one question. So, so I, I, I think that the, the 
the extent of the consultation responses were obviously um, fabulous, and uh, it's 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 very good to to read them. Um, when, when I uh, sort of respond to consultations, and when I see summaries of consultations, what I'm always drawn to is um, uh, the ideas which people come up with, okay. and um, there is a. There are a few embedded in this initial response, um, and, and, and I suspect this is going to be a, a particular area which is important when we talk about things like uh, how we adapt to climate change. So, so just a kind of request, really, is that as we in uh, reviewing the feedback from the consultations and as we go forward to the next round, if we could sort of pay particular attention to sort of pulling out ideas, particularly ideas or um, which are which are shared a, across a number of different people. I think that will be very helpful to uh, ensuring that we're sort of taking the best uh, the best um, out of all the consultation responses. So that was that was my 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 comment. Um, it's uh, you know, as I said, it's uh, it's just really enhancing the way that we actually respond back. Um, my question um relates to page 308 um and it's just asking for a little bit more specificity on the timing um paragraphs 24 and 25 talk about um the publication of the full list of the call for sites in in the summer um we are already in the summer i guess uh <laughs> for a few days uh, and, and paragraph 25 talks about uh, aging with local members, parish council, president associations before the lists are published. So that's quite a, that's quite a tall order. Um, and I just wondered whether um, Councillor Hawkins or one of the officers could give us a bit of a heads up as to when that process will start, because um, that's that's obviously quite a lot of work and uh, communication, which is going to happen in the next. Um, well, next weeks rather than months. Thank you. Um, if I can just answer that very briefly, I'll probably hand over to uh, um, Paul or maybe Caroline. Um, the we already had a call for sites last year, and uh, we've been inputting all that data in. But what we also did during this last consultation, which is an options consultation, was to ask for, um, you know, I know it's another call for sites really, but essentially for green spaces. Now, as far as I understand, that is still being inputted into the system. And yes, it is a tight deadline. And yes, we would like to do it. Um, but what I'm not sure of is how far we've got with that. So maybe Caroline might be able to help with that. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Um, yes, we are still working towards being able to uh, publish the call for sites along with the full representations received um, through the issues and options consultation. Um, we, we've said in summer because we're still working working through the precise timings of that. We still think that's possible, uh, maybe around the end of end of July. Uh, but that, but uh, we're still looking into that just to make sure that we can do you know before we commit fully to a date that we can actually deliver on that. Um, but very much the intention is to um, uh, brief. Uh, members and local parish councils and resident associations in Cambridge of the sites that have been put to us before we publish them. Because obviously we're aware that whilst they have no status, they're simply sites that have been put to the councils for consideration, uh, that nonetheless they will, um, you know, cause, um, you know, be of interest in, lo in, lo in local communities and, and potentially of some concern. So we want to make sure that we uh, make uh, those community representatives of those communities aware of what will be coming um, just before it is it is published, but it is very much at this stage a list of sites that are being put to us that we will then be going through a full assessment process before we um, move to a stage of um, deciding on a preferred strategy in the first case and then the sites that best fit with that strategy. Um, so yes, we're aiming for that. We're, we can update members um, as we get closer to that that time. If not, then uh, the con the consideration is whether it's appropriate to do that in August or whether we should wait till September. Obviously, recognising the um, sensitivities around releasing information and so on in 
uh, in August, albeit this is simply publishing information, it is not a consultation at this stage. And I think the point to note as well is that there is no planning status to any of these sites. Um, and I think people are you know, concerned about that. And I know that one or two um, communities have already started you know, campaigns, which really isn't necessary at this point in time. OK, thank you. So is that is that um, satisfying to Councillor Goff? Yes, no, I'm just uh, I'm just okay. interested as much as we can get if there are uh, sort of um, consultations which need to happen with members, obviously, as sure. uh, Caroline said at this particular period in the summer, uh, as much warning that that's coming would be uh, much appreciated because there is a there is a, a great deal of sort of interest um, uh, Maybe too much interest, <laughs> Councillor Hawkins, but there's still a great deal of interest in, uh, in that uh, part of the process. I know. OK, thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, so, uh, so um, Paul Thrainer, is there anything else you want to add? Thanks, Leader. Yes, I just wanted to just add a note for Councillor Goth around his first point on the consultation responses and making sure that we are looking at those ideas and those themes that can be tallied up and that is absolutely the, um, the, the, the need that we have to do with the consultation work that we've undertaken so far. Um, obviously it's a bigger job than we have usually experienced because of the number of representations we've had but um, certainly that gives us a greater breadth of ideas and responses from all of those people who have. So yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and of course, this is a joint local plan. So, you know, that's un that's very unusual and uh, carries all sorts of um, pitfalls, I suppose, with it with it as well, as well as lots and lots of lots and lots of opportunities. Uh, so, you know, this will this plan will be a nationally significant local plan um, because of its geography and because of the significance um, of our, of the Greater Cambridge area to um, big strategic government projects such as the Ox Oxford Cambridge Arc. So, uh, you know, it's very it's very important that our plan is um, ambitious and um, yeah, it's something that all our residents can get behind. So I think that's all the questions from Cabinet at the moment. So moving on to other members, and I see Councillor Claire Daunton would like to speak. Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, I was pleased to hear Councillor Hawkins reply to the complexity of the consultation process because of the number of consultees, the number of bodies that we have to involve. And she said the report sets it out very clearly on pages 309 to 310. Um, and I just wondered if it would be possible to give that context um, to our parishes, to our residents, when we explain uh, the changes to the timetable. I think it's very interesting and very relevant, and it sets us in the wider picture. Um, so I think residents will see that as important and also just a plea that when that's done that all the acronyms are fully explained and we refer to DCOs you know most people don't know what a DCO is and don't know the major impact that it will have on uh, on the plan so um, yes thank you for the explanation but also could that be broadened out the, the full context be given sure uh, th so that's that's really important. Yep. I hate acronyms and I I hate what I've always referred to as council speak because it's a language that only only we speak. Um, so I'm not surprising. Um, not surprisingly, Councillor Lacey wanted to comment, but I think he's saying he's having to leave us, which is a shame because he normally really uh, you know, holds our hands to the fire as far as uh, using proper <laughs> terminology and our papers concerned. And that's much, uh, much appreciated. So I haven't got anybody else wanting to speak at the moment. Um, so the recommendation is so uh, this is being proposed by uh, Councillor Hawkins, and I believe Councillor van der Weyer is going to second this. Can you just cons confirm that, Councillor van der Weyer, please? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I, I, I am will be seconding this. Thank you. So the recommendation is um, a note the report on initial feedback from the first consultation cons consultation conversation. 
sorry, first conversation oh, consultation included at Appendix <laughs> 1. We agree additional informal member and stakeholder engagement and preferred option stages to be added to the local plan making process. And C, agree the approach to addressing the duty to cooperate included as Appendix 3 to this report, subject to any material changes necessary as a result of consultation with duty to cooperate bodies. So do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Agreed. Does anyone wish, wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And moving on to item nine, uh, which is the update of the Greater Cambridge Local Development Scheme. Uh, and Councillor Hawkins again. It's your day, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you'd like to introduce this, mm -hmm. this report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, I'll keep this brief because uh, really it's uh, just an, you know, it, it's a follow up from the last two items that we've discussed. Uh, we as a planning authority, we are required by law to prepare and maintain uh, what is called a local development scheme. And uh, I will call that LDS, please, for short, so that I can get through what I need to get through. And obviously the, uh, the LDS provides information on the documents that relate to producing a local plan and the timetable for producing um, those documents. Now, the current um, scheme was adopted in October 2018 uh, with a small update in November 2019. Now, as we've just discussed in the last two items, um, the NECAAP and the joint local plan, the timetables for those, um, you know, the broad timetables have now changed from what it was uh, previously. And so it's important that we update the local development scheme to reflect this and the update is as set out in appendix one of our agenda papers so i would um therefore propose the recommendations that we have on page 359 to the cabinet and if i might say this has also gone through the uh jail pack beg your pardon joint local area planning action group <laughs> thank you thank you very much for that um so do we have a seconder for this report, please? I think um, Councillor van der Waal was going to second this one as well. Yes, that's correct. I will second it. That's fine. Right. And I haven't got any speakers uh, from Cabinet on this yet, hopefully because it's all very self-explanatory. Um, and are there, can, if there's any speakers, other speakers participating, could they please make themselves known now? Otherwise, we'll move straight on to the recommendations. No, OK, in which case we're moving straight on to the recommendations. Um, so it's recommended that Cabinet A adopt the updated local development scheme for Greater Cambridge, included at Appendix 1 of this report to take effect on the 13th of July 2020. B grant delegated authority to the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development in liaison with South Cambridge, a lead cabinet member for planning and the Cambridge City Council Executive Councillor for Planning Policy and Open Spaces to make any minor editing changes and corrections identified prior to publication. So do members agree with this proposal, please? Agreed. Agreed. Is anyone wishing to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And moving on to um, item 10, health and wellbeing strategy, which is obviously linked to planning, but isn't exclusively about planning. So, um, so I'm going to introduce this. Um, it starts at page 383. So let me just uh, find it in my huge papers here. Sorry about the banging in the background here. Um, I hope you can't hear it. So health and well-being um, has never been more important than uh, and it is now. So that I've written a forward to this strategy, which is at page 393. And I'll just read the first paragraph of that, which hopefully sets the context in the world that we currently find ourselves in. So health and well-being is not a standalone issue and its importance for all of us has been highlighted in the darkest manner during the COVID pandemic, when those people with the poorest predicted health outcomes have suffered the most. One of our main goals must be to make our residents, our villages and towns truly resilient to future threats of this nature. And it's a sad fact that this pandemic may well not be the first and the last pandemic that we appreciate that we experience in that in this country and in the world. Um, 
And so it's really this is an opportunity with this strategy to make sure that all the good things that have come out of COVID, all the community action, all the volunteers uh, that have been put in place really quickly are captured and embedded as we move forward so that we are in a far better position to uh, deal with any other crisis as we move forward. Now, officers have put an enormous amount of work in, into this over a considerable time. It's taken an awful long time to get to this point because health and wellbeing is, com is complex and it's particularly complex for those of us at district council level because you know we, we do so many different things, but I think they have refined this down to something which is, uh, which is manageable and deliverable and which translates into a number of action plans. But it, it's, not, it's not going to be um, a document which is static. This is going to have to be a document which we are revisiting on a very, very regular basis as we find out more about uh, the consequences of COVID. And, uh, you know, there's been some very alarming stuff in the paper about, um, you know, damage to people's brains and so on. You know, this could, this could really change things for, a, for a, lot of, a lot of people. This might be a disease that people don't easily get over. And that often means that um, people then look to their lo local authorities for the help they need to continue their lives. Um, so, as I'm very, I'm very pleased, I'm very pleased with this. Um, but it is something that we're go is going to stay as a very live document moving forward. And I think Councillor Hazel Smith has indicated that she would like to second it. And I'm sure, um, as this is a subject she subject she's been involved with for a long time, she would like to add something. Thank you, Leader. Yes, I'm quite happy to second uh, this this um, document. It it uh, needs to be approved by cabinet, um, and then we will take it forward. Um, it's it's summarising what we're already actually doing, and no doubt it will be um, looked at again in the light of COVID over the next few months and we we will have changes that we will need to make to it but um it it's uh it, it's a sound piece of work based on evidence showing what we need to do for our district council area and um i commend it to the cabinet yeah Thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Brian Mills, I know that um, Scrutiny and Overview uh, spent some time on this. I wonder, yeah. wonder if you'd like to comment. Thank you, Lady. Yes, um, and you will see on the update from Scrutiny and Overview Committee on our page five of the agenda, and then so there's five comments on there, and then on page 384, um, there's a number of things that we listed um, in response to this. Um, and I think many of us will recognise the difficulty of creating something from nothing. Um, you know, the, the, the first time uh, that you have to create something of this nature is really the hard miles. And we uh, recommend, uh, you know, the hard work of the uh, officers in, in producing this. Um, and we know how important health and well-being is now considered in a wider global sphere. Um, if we'd have produced this report five years ago, people perhaps would have thought we were slightly eccentric. Uh, but this is uh, a critical uh, area for us to be considering these days. So we recommend it with the uh, comments that we've made on page five and 384 of uh, your agenda today. Thank, thank you very much. And those comments are welcome. Um, I should just um, you know, reference that um, Councillor Sue Ellington led a uh, task and finish group uh, a number of years ago now on behalf of Scrutiny and Overview, which looked at um, the sort of um, responsibilities this council should be embracing in health and well-being. And I think a lot of those have perpetuated into this, this piece of work. Uh, that was a mammoth bit of work that uh, she and cross-party colleagues did. Um, yes, and I should apologise. I, I, um, I, I'm not put that into consideration and, and uh, I was I was aware of that work and uh, apologies for not mentioning it. That, that, that's fine. I thought I'd get it in before somebody else somebody else did. So so that work has not that 
that work's not been lost um, and has carried forward into this. Uh, as I say, it's taken a long time coming, but in point of fact, the timing is good because if we put this in place six months ago, it would have had, a, had to have a complete and utter rewrite as a result of what we now know about, um, about COVID. So I think the timing is good. Uh, so I haven't got any other speakers at the moment. Can you indicate now, please, if you would like to speak? No. OK, so um, it's rec um, the recommendation is that Cabinet formally approves and adopts this health and wellbeing strategy and action plan. Do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Okay. Thank you. Does anybody wish to vote against? Does anyone wish to abstain? No, OK, so, uh, so uh, I apologise, I haven't brought, it, brought our officers in, but actually I think uh, I think it's generally accepted that uh, this was a very, very good bit of work. We're extremely grateful for all their efforts and, uh, you know, we now look forward to, uh, to implementing it um, enthusiastically. So thank you very much indeed. The Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And moving now on to item 11, which is the establishment of additional liaison meetings. Now, this was uh, something that I think was first talked about um, two, year, two years ago um, and which Councillor Goff has led on. So I think he's going to introduce the item. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, so, so the introduction of these uh, liaison meetings uh, was in the business plan. Uh, for, for this year, so this is um, something we've talked about for some time. I, I would just like to explain a little bit about um, what the background to these liaison meetings are and what they can achieve, because I'm, I personally um, am a great fan of these um, and, I, and I think they can actually, in the right circumstances, do a lot to help our communities who are facing the prospect of significant new developments uh, within their villages. Um, the first thing to, to, to stress is that, that when Councillor Wilson and I um, established this in Cottenham, we did not know we were establishing a Cottenham model. So uh, it's quite, quite hilarious to be seen it is described as a Cottenham model with the benefit of hindsight. Um, but, but the circumstance of what we, we had in Cottenham was four different developers developing new sites of over 500 houses, uh, which was a more than 25% increase in the scale of the village. And they were all working pretty much in isolation. And there were issues which were arising as a consequence of the fact of a lack of education. Uh, the fact that their sort of efforts were were sort of not focused on uh, the integration of the new residents into our communities um, after the, the houses had been built and occupied. So, so we had really three objectives, one of which was to improve the coordination among the developers and between the developers and the community. Secondly, improve the communication between the community uh, between the developers and the uh, the community, and lastly, uh, and this is easy to forget, is to actually undertake to improve the integration of new residents into their communities. Um, it's had good success, I, I would say, and and if I could just give members an idea of the sort of things which this group has achieved over the last eighteen months. Um, it's achieved, for example, coordinating road closures between developers so that they apply for road closures and do work simultaneously to reduce disruption. Uh, Rechecking road closures or road maintenance to uh, road works to avoid school holidays. Um, helping coordination between developers so one developer making available water supply to enhance dust suppression. Uh, agreeing changes to section 106 in terms of uh, relocation bus stops to areas which are more useful to the community. If it works, it will save everyone time by being able to resolve these issues by having everyone around the table. Um, and 
Uh, if it doesn't work, my, my suggestion is then, and that this is the basis under which we've run the scheme in Cottenham, is if, if people feel that it's not delivering, then there's no point in continuing. Ultimately, this should be saving effort and improving outcomes. Um, so this is a recommendation to basically take what has worked in Cottenham uh, to five uh, villages which are, have got the characteristics of significant increases in new builds, uh, which represent a significant increase in the population and similar, simultaneously sort of multiple developers. Um, so uh, it's a it's a it's an initiative which I, I think will hopefully be welcomed by those communities and also by the developers as well, because one of the characteristics of what's happening in Cotton is that the developers also see it as a, uh, a useful way of communicating their work um, to the community and uh, to the council. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. I'm a huge fan of the Cottenham model. Um, you know, the more the more people talk, the uh, the easier things things go. Uh, so again, I think Councillor Van der Weyer wishes to second this. Do you want, would you like to speak on it as well? No, no, no I don't. Want to speak. Okay, um, let's just see if we've got um, anything in the chat. Uh, yes, Councillor Hawkins, I think you'd like to speak. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, just to say on behalf of my community of Caldicott, uh, thank you for including us in this uh, in this scheme. Um, definitely, we, we are going to see a lot of growth. I mean, the figure that's been quoted for us is 195. But in reality, there's a site that is going to come back eventually, which will make it 269. Um, in a village that's barely what 650 houses, um, you know, which in total is about 40% growth over the next five years, and that is a heck of a lot of um, of houses. Um, we have one site now that um, so was mothballed during COVID, and they're now sort of you know coming back to start work. And the second developer is hoping to have the plan information you know shortly, so it definitely will benefit us. And having heard of how it's benefited Cottenham, um, I can see that, um, yeah, I mean, the community will have work to do, obviously, um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, it's it's very welcome. And, uh, you know, thank you for those who've uh, brought this forward. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so in the absence of any other cabinet members, I'm going to move to Councillor Brian Milnes. Thank you, Leader. I just want to uh, echo what uh, um, Councillor Hawkins just uh, suggested on behalf of um, and as the member for Salston, uh, which is a location, as the report uh, notes, that with significant number of developments. We've just approved the Huawei uh, development in the village, uh, which itself will require uh, local housing, uh, possibly on the site and elsewhere. And obviously there are uh, several places in the call for sites um, uh, in and around the village. So uh, the uh, possibility uh, that this affords the uh, uh, local parish council and uh, uh, other residents uh, is, is highly welcome. So thank you. Thank, thank you for those um, supportive comments. Uh, Councillor Anna Bradnam. Thank you, Leader. Um, as chairman of the Water Beach Liaison uh, Forum, um, I think it's worth pointing out that the forums are extremely useful because they do give the community itself, and obviously that's in Water Beach, that's Water Beach Village, um, the opportunity to comment on how this new town will look and, and uh, it gives them an opportunity to raise their concerns about how, how these two the communities will be will be cohesive together. But what it also does is it gives the opportunities for the other villages who, in this case, satellite Water Beach or draw to it, it gives them an opportunity to comment on matters that affect them, like transport through them or, or um, uh, the, the services that this new town will provide. And I think it's um, a really important forum to, to give these communities an opportunity to ask the questions that they want to ask. So I think they're a very good idea. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you, Councillor Bradman. That's a point well made that uh, development doesn't just affect the community in which it's happening. It affects uh, it definitely affects the satellites around them. So that's that's very good, very good point. So in the absence of anybody else wishing to speak, I'm going to move to the recommendation. And the recommendation is that Cabinet approves the introduction of five new liaison meetings in Barrington, Caldicott, Hardwick, Swavesey and Sawston, bringing the total number of concurrent active liaison meetings to six. So do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Does anybody wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? OK, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. Thank you very much. And moving on to zero, zero carbon community grants and um, Councillor John Williams, uh, would you introduce this, please? Thank you, Leader. I, I'm delighted to move the recommendations on page uh, 425. Um, we set up the Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme in May last year. Um, last year we had 42 applications and 19 were successful. Uh, we said that we would undertake a review and we held a workshop for all council members. A strong theme um, from both the review and the workshop was that we should make the scheme as easy as possible. Uh, to help parish councils and other community um, organisations to devise uh, their projects and that we should focus on three main themes uh, of cycling, community buildings, uh, tree planting and including in tree plant planting other nature based solutions. This year's uh, budget is £100,000 um, it's earmarked from the renewables reserve, uh, which is made up of money from the non-domestic rates we get from the renewable energy schemes that uh, we have uh, given permission for in the district. Um, and a workshop is planned for the 6th of July. For yeah. um, on Friday, this uh, report did go to the Grants Committee and they were also very much um, in favour of the changes. There were some recommendations that they made regarding the application form, but they can be dealt with under the delegated powers. So um, I would I would ask Cabinet to please um, um, approve these recommendations so that we can have another successful scheme this year. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Williams, and I'm happy to uh, to second this. Um, you know, it was very, very exciting, the grants we gave out last year. Um, and at that time, we were uh, we were doing our sort of best guess as to what would be successful. And actually, I think we got it largely right. But it's very uh, helpful to use our experiences to uh, refine this still further, to make it as easy as possible for uh, communities to uh, and charities to uh, get money out of us. Uh, uh, which will really impact on reducing the, uh, the, the carbon costs of South, Ca South Cambridgeshire to help us with our ambition to be zero carbon and to be the greenest district council in the country. And I think we're, we're being hugely successful in achieving that thus far. So £100,000 put into the next pot to do so uh, can only help. Uh, so I haven't, have I got any speakers from Cabinet? I haven't at the moment. No, so I shall, and I don't think I've got scrutiny um, speaking on this, but uh, Councillor Mills, would you just like to confirm that scrutiny aren't, aren't planning to speak on this? No, this, this wasn't something that uh, has yeah. been for um, scrutiny on a personal basis. I uh, um, hope it's a, a, a rival and renewal. Lovely. Thank you very, thank you very much indeed. Yes, I say it's been through the grants committee, where I'm sure it's had rigorous scrutiny there. Uh, so, Councillor Anna Bradman, please. Thank you, Leader. Um, I wanted to say what, thank you very much uh, for allocating money for this. I think it's a really good second step uh, following the initial one last time, and uh, I'm very glad to that you've included. The, the broadness of the category so that people can 
think what's relevant to their own locations and also tree planting and other nature based solutions. Actually, there's a lot of biodiversity that can be had in a hedge. <laughs> so uh, I'm very glad for that. The only thing I was as uh, Councillor Williams was giving the date, uh, I think his Internet broke down and he mentioned in July. I just wanted to check. Was that the I couldn't hear what he was saying, whether that was the end of the uh, the start of the start of the funding opening up uh, or the closure. If you could just clarify that, that'd be helpful, please. Uh, yes, I can. It's it's before the start. Um, it's a workshop for all organisations to come and um, understand what we're looking for for this year and how to fill in the application form. Sorry, and what was the date of that? I understand it's the 6th of July. 6th of July. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. OK, right. I haven't got anybody else uh, waiting to speak, so I'm going to move to the recommendation and the recommendation is that Cabinet 1 approves changes to the Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme as outlined in paragraph 11, which will result in a more focused scheme providing funding to projects under three th themes, cycling, community buildings, tree planting and other nature based solutions and two delegates to the head of shared waste service and environment the authority to make minor changes to the scheme documents in appendices a and b brackets information for applicants and application form questions close brackets as necessary for clarity uh, do members agree with the proposal agreed agreed anybody wishing to vote against and anyone wishing to abstain Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation and my thanks to all those members who participate, members and officers who participated in the really excellent workshop that's helped to, uh, to shape this. And moving on to item 13, which is the Residence Involvement Strategy 2020 to 2023. And Councillor Hazel Smith is going to introduce the report and move the recommendation. Thank you, Leader. Uh, cabinets asked to consider the draft resident involvement strategy here um, so that it can go out to wider consultation with tenants. Um, this is this is a tenant document and this is the last time members will see it. The strategy has been developed through a tenant and member steering group and has also been considered by our current tenant participation group and the scrutiny and overview committee and I'd like to thank uh, particularly the tenant participation group and the steering group for, for all the work that they put into this strategy over a number of months. The strategy proposes a new framework for tenant engagement, including the implementation of a housing engagement board consisting of tenants and members. The board will act as a forum to consult on and scrutinise housing issues, including performance and policy development. Officers have taken into account comments made at the Scrutiny and Overview Committee and have made changes to the draft strategy, which are outlined in point 30 of this report. And they're working on a simplified leaflet version of the strategy, setting out the key points as a user friendly guide for tenants. Um, I'm moving the cabinet approves the draft strategy. This will then go out to wider consultation, including through our leaseholder, forums and sheltered housing forum and we will use various forms of publicity including e-newsletters website and our Facebook page. The final strategy will later be approved by the lead member for housing ahead of the elections for the housing engagement board members which will be held in the spring of next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is a really excellent proposal here. It's an enormous uh, improvement and uh, simplica simplification of the process, which will hopefully um, be very well received by our, res our residents. Uh, so I think Councillor Hawkins is seconding this. Could you confirm that, please? Um, yes, Leader, I am seconding this. Thank you. Would you like to uh, speak then? Uh, just a quick one, really. It's as you say, it's it's a really good document, easy to read, um, well laid out, and uh, actually, I am excited to see what's been proposed, um, especially when you think what happened with Grenfell, and um, the fact that it is important for us to make sure that our tenants' voices are heard, heard clearly, and that um, you know we take on board 
um, what their views are because at the end of the day, it's their home, you know. Um, so yes, I uh, uh, heartily recommend this um, to the cabinet. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, do I, right, I think Scrutiny and Overview had a look at this. So, uh, Councillor Brian Mills, would you like to come in at this stage, please? Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hazel Smith um, uh, has mentioned that, in fact, on page 457 of the report, it mentions the recommendations that the Scrutiny Committee made have already been incorporated into the uh, document, into the revised document. So, thank you for that response. And, um, I recommend it to, to uh, the cabinet. Thank you very much. Um, and I think Councillor Claire Daunton would like to speak. Um, yes, thank you, Leader. Um, I'm speaking as a member of the of the group which helped to put this together, working with tenants. And I'm delighted to see that it's it's almost there. Um, and also particularly delighted to see that under Housing Engagement Board, we do now see that as um, a body that will be scrutinising as well as monitoring performance um, and also delighted to see that there will be elections to this body. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that, for your contribution and uh, thank you for your work in helping to put this, this together um, along with officers who again have put considerable time and effort into this. So I haven't got anybody else wishing to speak. Um, so we'll just move to the recommendation in that case. Uh, and members are, rec um, the recommendation is, it's recommended that Cabinet approves the draft resident involvement strategy 2020 to 23 to go out to wider tenant consultation. The Cabinet also delegates authority to the lead member for housing to approve the final strategy subject to any minor amendments arising from this consultation, from any new guidance issued by the regulator for social housing or from guidance issued by government if stroke when the issues within the green paper become law. So do members agree this proposal? Agreed. Agreed. Does anybody wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? Okay, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And on to number 14, which is the new build housing strategy 2020 to 2025. And Councillor Hazel Smith again, could you introduce this please? Thank you, Vida. Um, again, I'd like to thank the many officers, past and present, who've contributed to the Council's new build housing strategy. We have had a number of changes of staff and, and everybody has put their all into this. Um, the financial resources for the new build programme come to full council twice a year in the autumn and the budget meeting. Um, and, um, and we will see the progress against the targets as more new council houses become available to rent. We have two schemes due for completion and handover to tenants within the next couple of months. And um, so we can see that uh, things are getting moving on the house building front and um, it's good to see them coming through. Um, if there are any questions, I have officers here who can help to field them. But this had a, had um, a, a good chewing over at, at scrutiny. Um, so um, I would commend it to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And there's nothing, nothing better that we do than build council houses. Uh, so um, I think Councillor Toomey Hawkins, you wish to uh, second this? Uh, yes, Leader, thank you. I'm seconding this. And um, it's just to say, obviously, we, we know we have a housing need and we, you know, we have a big target to meet, but um, it's good to see that we actually are making good progress. Um, as we've seen in, I think it's paragraph 3.2, um, where, you know, since 2018, we've had 29 new council homes started on site um, and a further 81 um, approved in Nostal due to start. So, you know, that is really good progress and I'd like to see, uh, you know, more of that come along. So, yes, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, I don't think I've got any, let me just check if there's any speakers. No, I don't think I've got any any other speakers. Uh, so, so Councillor Mills, this uh, do you want yes, to talk you. about scrutiny, please? So yes, we we um, chewed it over, <laughs> as as is our want scrutiny. 
this has been <clears throat> probably the least contentious of any of our policies. Uh, I think uh, the whole council want to see as much uh, new council um, housing as possible. Um, we uh, welcome this, this report in that regard. Um, so uh, we made uh, a couple of um, comments um, and particularly I think over build quality, uh, um, insulation, uh, you know, uh, we had a conversation about solar panels, for example, which we, um, for example, we were, we were um, upset that we didn't um, enforce uh, solar pan paneling uh, on previous um, uh, projects. Uh, uh, so, uh, with those uh, with those comments, we uh, welcome uh, the strategy document and recommend it to the cabinet. Thank, thank you very much. And um, scrutiny's points are well well made. The uh, the more energy efficient our council housing is, the cheaper it is to run, mm -hmm. and uh, that's also true of private housing. And it's certainly one of our missions to be uh, making sure that all housing built in South Cambridgeshire. Uh, frees up as much of people's income as possible from paying utility bills and so on uh, in order that they can have some fun with their money rather than just uh, spend it on the necessities of life. So I've got no more questions uh, so we'll move to the recommendation and the recommendation is that cabinets asked to approve the new build ho council housing strategy and recommend it to proceed to council for adoption. Do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Does anybody wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation and my huge thanks and that of Cabinet to the officers who have uh, done this work and continue to ensure that uh, we achieve our challenging targets for helpful council house building in South Cambridgeshire. Uh, so, on to item 16, review of barriers to council procurement for small and medium sized enterprises, uh, the task and finish group. Uh, so councillor John Williams is going to introduce this report. Sorry, have you um, missed Mr. 15? Yeah. Quarter four operational. Oh, I'm sorry, yep. thank yep. you. I turned over, my, my apologies, I turned over two, two pages. So thank you very much, Councillor Bradman. So quarter four performance report. What a one to miss out. Uh, so, so item 15 on our agenda is the quarter four performance report, which Councillor Neil Goff is going to introduce. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leader. So, so I think this report is fairly self-evident. Of course, it's quarter four. So uh, the significance of that is it runs to the end of March and I'm sure everyone's really interested in the next quarter as to what happened after the lockdown. So um, that uh, that that data will come. Um, scrutiny raised the um, the question of a report on the how the council is coping with the lockdown. That report is under preparation uh, and I think will make very interesting reading. Uh, in terms of the resilience of the council, in terms of coping with the uh, the complication of lockdown, but as I said, this report is um, uh, for the for the fourth quarter, uh, and um, it's it's good to see sort of areas which have been in the past ones of concern continue to improve, uh, particularly the the call centre. Obviously, it's going to be really interesting to see how that copes um, and has coped in the uh, the COVID. Uh, period. Um, uh, but as scrutiny pointed out, obviously the, the bed and breakfast accommodation spend and continues to run uh, at a run rate which is uh, in excess of the uh, the target which I know um, scrutiny pointed out and the the voids on the uh, on the housing stock as well. So those are obviously areas which I'm sure Councillor Smith is uh, is focused on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And do we have a seconder for this, please? I'll second. Uh, thank you very much indeed, C Councillor Williams. Do you want to speak at this moment? No, no. Reserve uh, my right to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So, uh, so we can see from this report there's been considerable improvements, uh, which are down to the efforts of our officers. So, uh, so thank you very much to them for continuing to ensure that our performance is on a um, an upward trajectory 
um, despite all the challenges that have been uh, been thrown at us in recent recent months uh, due to COVID primarily. So I haven't got any speakers at the moment. Anybody else from Cabinet? No, so I'm going to move over to scrutiny and overview and Councillor Varane Milnes, please. I think thank you, uh, Leader, but Councillor Goff already mentioned the uh, the, the two things that uh, we recommended, so um, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I haven't got, uh, oh, Councillor Anna Bradnam, you'd like to contribute. Thank you, Leader. Um, I just wanted to ask if uh, Mr Nicholl could um, give an explanation for ES418, which is on our page 500. It's the percentage of household waste sent for reuse, recycling and composting, which is cumulative, uh, which has been dropping. And uh, this is not intended as a criticism. It, it may simply be that the nature of our waste is changing. And I just or because we've achieved good um, um, percentages in the past, it's actually then hard to increase them any further, if you see what I mean. So is there some sort of operational reason why that's dropping? Thank you. Yep, so um, the reason it drops um, during that time of the year is, is because a lot of the uh, recycling rate is made up from organic fraction. So we don't collect garden waste or we reduce our garden waste collections during that period. So that will see a drop through the year. So we will have this, um, our, our percentage goes up sort of back end of the summer and then slowly drops down through the year. So if you look on a year by year basis, we are, we're sort of plateauing. We have increased slightly by about half a percent from one year to the next. Um, so this is a seasonal um, organic composting issue that it looks like it drops through the year. Thank you. I thought it would. I thought it would be something of that ilk. So thank you, Mr. Nicol. Thank you very much indeed. Um, have, I haven't got any more speakers. Anybody else want to make comment before I bring in? No, I think that's it. Okay, fine. Uh, so I mean, it's quite it's self-explanatory and it's well presented, and I'm glad that we are focusing our attention on relatively few areas, um, which makes more sense. And again, thank you very much to officers for their considerable efforts to improve performance. Um, so I think we're just being asked to note this report. So members, are you content to note the report? Yep. Yes. OK, that's lovely. So the report is duly noted. And now moving on to 16, not prematurely this time, which is the review of barriers to council procurement for small and medium sized enterprises task and finished group. And that's going to be introduced by Councillor John, John Williams. Thank, thank you, Leader. Um, I think we all, we all understand that bidding for work from a public body uh, can be very daunting uh, for an SME. Um, we set up a task and finish group and that reported to Cabinet in March last year um, on ways to help with this. And this report uh, is on the actions taken over the past 12 months uh, since that uh, report to Cabinet. Um, I'd like to draw attention in particular um, because it's not just bidding that um, is an issue. If you look on page 507, um, it's also um, and a particular area of importance to SMEs is the punctuality of the payment of, of their invoices. And you'll see that on page uh, 507 that we have actually, uh, we have seen an improvement uh, with payment uh, in 30 days over last year. Um, and we're now at um, over or around 99%. Um, so I think um, that is an issue that particularly in the current circumstances um, is an issue for um, particularly SMEs with um, cash flow issues that um, that we also address that as well as helping them to actually bid uh, for work. But um, I think it's a it's a step in the right direction. The report shows that our officers um, with the workshops etc that they're doing are making a lot of effort to get our local businesses um, to pitch for work from the council and I hope to see this improving going forward. Thank you very much indeed Councillor Williams. Uh, this is something that um, I care passionately about 
uh, a very recently commissioned report uh, that we're doing jointly with Cambridge City, looking at the economic consequences of COVID has shown that uh, South Cambridge's economy is disproportionately reliant on SMEs and home, work, home workers. Uh, so, you know, we absolutely, in our endeavours to support the businesses that are part of our own economy, need to make sure that they have every fair opportunity to uh, undertake work on behalf of the council. And we need to be making it easy for them to uh, compete with people who are possibly better resourced to do this, but no, no better um, able to deliver on what we're what we're asking. So this is a very, very important piece of work. Uh, so I've got a couple of people wishing to speak. Uh, Councillor Brian Milnes first. Uh, thank you. Just as part of the original task and finish group, I'd like to uh, thank um, uh, the officers and uh, members that are involved in this review. Um, um, uh, Sean Missing was very responsive at the time and subsequently uh, with going out and investigating, for example, um, South Tyneside and Preston councils who have done uh, work in this, this regard. So we've brought that into the mix. And I, I see um, a, a very good response um, to our desire to make it easier for SMEs, which you rightly describe as the lifeblood of our economy um to do business with the, the council thank you thank you very much and i'm now going to invite councillor peter mcdonald who's our member champion for business to uh, speak yes th th thank you leader and uh, i also echo councillor milne's comments about the officer work and the work that he and the task and finish group did that was great uh, two observations obviously in the situation we're in now where economic recovery is um, not just uh, nice to have, but absolutely need to have um, to get out of the current situation. Um, I think that the uh, newly created business support team is going to be able to help on this uh, somewhat as well. Uh, and so I'd um, welcome inputs from businesses and, and also from members in South Cams uh, to engage with that team so that uh, we can reinvigorate this process. Th thank you. Thank you very much. So as well as, uh, you know, we now have considerable expertise within South Cambridgeshire, but I know that we have considerable expertise amongst our membership uh, with people, you know, from all sorts of uh, walks of business life. So this is a truly collaborative bit of work and I'm very, very pleased with this indeed. So the requirement is just to uh, note the paper. Uh, so I'm, I'm tasked with saying, Cabinet, are you content to note the actions undertaken over the past 12 months to reduce barriers to council procurement for small and medium-sized SMEs outlined in the report? And SME stands for small and medium-sized enterprise. Are you yes. content? Yes. That's lovely. OK, so as I said at the outset, this now takes us to uh, the part of the meeting where we are going to move on to um, items that are um, sensitive. Uh, so, we, so we now come to the point in our agenda where we need to consider whether to exclude the press and public from the meeting. This is because the next items contain information which is commercially sensitive. Members of the public are advised that if Cabinet agrees to exclude the press and public, the video stream will end. And uh, in which case I will thank you very much for uh, tuning in and giving us your Monday mornings. Um, I move that the following items of business contain exempt information falling within paragraph three as set out on your agenda and the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. Uh, do I have a seconder for that? Yes. Uh, thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, so do members agree with the proposal? Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Does anyone wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So therefore I propose that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following items of business in accordance with section 100A brackets 4 of the Local Government Act 1972 on the grounds that if present there would be a disclosure to them of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A of the Act bracket as amended. Is that seconded? Seconded. Thank you very much, Councillor Hawkins. So do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Agreed. 
Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? And does anyone wish to abstain? So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So members of the public who are watching, this means that the video stream will now end and we thank you very much for joining us to view today's Cabinet meeting. Um, if you've got any comments on to how things could uh, work better, then you know, please do email me. I'm always interested to uh, hear from you. So I'm going to ask officers to uh, confirm that the video stream has been ceased before we continue.